Welcome back to Mullen Lave Wargaming. We're playing War in the Pacific Admiral's Edition, playing a play by email campaign as Japan in Scenario 1, now setting up the December 24th, 1941 turn. So we've had a few quiet turns, and uh, I think that quiet period is more or less over. Uh, we're starting to see that with a resurgence of air combat over Burma, and um, coming up, we're going to have a pretty big day in China. Um, starting over in the uh, coastal region at Chusin. So for the moment, uh, we, we know that there's a strong enemy force here. Uh, we know there's additional units bordering him uh, that can come in and link up with him any time. So rather than um, let this enemy unit that's already stronger than my, my uh, the, the army I've brought in to oppose it, um, Rather than let them get stronger, I just want to go in and, and try to defeat this group now as soon as possible, uh, rather than try to win a race to, to Wen Chao. Um, basically, I think what, what can happen here is that if I can stop this stack from getting any bigger, then I'm the one that's going to end up having the biggest stack in the area. Um, so that's, that's my thinking there. Um, Moving up, we're going to have attacks here. Uh, these, these are just beaten up units. Um, there's a major concentration of forces up here at Nanyang. Um, so once again, I'm, I was talking before about, you know, maybe like if they have too much, um, I'll just go ahead and take what's given to me. And I, I see 15 units here, and my first instinct is like, well, these are the guys I have to kill, and you know they're they're in a clear hex, um, and they're sending more. We got three more units uh, heading over to Nanchang, um, so I'm actually going to be able to concentrate quite a bit of of military power here too. Um, so I've already got a division here. Um, I've got another division coming up through there. Uh, I've got another division sitting here. Um, there's another division. There's another division. Um, and is this a division? No, a few, few additional regiments. So what was that, like five divisions? Um, yeah, chances are they're not going to put anything together that's going to fight off five divisions. Oh, and by the way, there's another one, uh, plus tank support. That's working its way around. Um, yeah, I I think we can get them. And if we can't, then yeah, I guess I can just settle for for rolling the uh, Changchow and Luoyang twin cities over here. Uh, so moving up on the road to Cyan, um, this unit is barely fatigued or disrupted. So even though we attacked last turn, we can keep attacking. Uh, so it's two tank regiments and a mixed brigade. That's hard to hurt. Um, over here, we're moving this division and tank regiment back uh, into this region to become part of this push. Uh, there's another tank regiment here that's going to be part of this push. And then as for these guys, I'm just going to kind of use these infantry regiments as um, as like a hunter-killer group. So f for now, uh, we're going after these guys in the rear. Uh, once we push them around a bit more, maybe we'll go after these guys. Um, I have enough here to hold these cities, um, so it's really just a matter of eliminating the enemies that are at my doorstep. We're still showing a whole lot of enemy fighters at Rangoon. It's not clear to me why they, why not more of them didn't participate. Um, it's not like they're being held in reserve for bombing missions. But got two subs hanging out. Our minefield's still there, uh, so hopefully we can get some more attrition out of these guys. Um, not really looking forward to sending more strikes, but I don't want to rein in the, um, the bombers too much because I want to be able to hit them when they come around the corner. So if I, I don't know any way to actually exclude them from flying to Rangoon other than not monitoring Rangoon itself, which I don't know, maybe that's what I should do. Maybe I should just prevent sweeps from, from going there and interrupt recon for a little bit and 
just be like, hey, now we're not going to uh, attack these guys. Um, yeah, in any case, we're not going to be able to um, sustain a lot of replacement zeros. We've only got two in the pool. We're adding two or three planes a day, and we need those planes to transition clawed units. In Malaya, the fall of Alor Star opens up rail lines that go all the way down to Kuala Lumpur, and that's going to go to Malacca very soon. Um, thanks to that, we have a whole lot of units that are moving. Um, parts of divisions that have been split up are going to be uh, reunifying, probably, in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, just as an example, like this 18th Mountain Gun Regiment is part of the 18th Division. Um, the 18th Division is uh, scattered between mostly Kotabaru and Jahore Baru. Uh, so I guess they're not all going to meet up at Kuala Lumpur. They'll meet up at Jahore Baru. Um, but these units tend to fight a little bit better when they're unified as a division. Um, so that's what's going to be happening as we start making our final push into Singapore. One thing I was concerned about was that the enemy might try to make a push at Johore, and we may be seeing exactly that with uh, three units now trying to work their way in. Uh, so these guys are going to be getting the attention of my bombers this turn. And actually these guys... Um, just in case they've got a fight on their hands, I'm going to conserve supply for them a little bit. And speaking of supply, I should actually send in some more to Mersing just in case. We don't quite have a supply line established here. Alright, so we just set up a supply run out of Saigon uh, to keep Mersing well stocked. Uh, turning to the Philippines, I'm a little concerned about fatigue and disruption here. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and attack for a consecutive turn. Um, I think these guys are close to surrendering. For the uh, move on Malaya, because we didn't have our armor prevail this turn, I've moved him in the combat mode just to slow him down a bit. I don't need him getting the Manila just yet. Our southern force has arrived in Lucena, so they'll be attacking. Um, so then we can hopefully get them into Manila pretty soon after that. I didn't notice this before. Batangas has five fighters. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, well. We'll just let him be for now. At Puerto Princesa, we've got the fires out on this Kingfisher damaged cargo ship, so they're reporting to Saigon for repairs. Uh, we've landed at uh, Orokieta, so we're going to capture that this turn. Uh, we also have a tank regiment that's reinforced our forces at Catabo, so thanks to that we're going to try and attack this turn. Yeah, since our nails aren't doing anything else. Let's give them some support. The um, second task force originally assigned to Ambon has arrived in theater. Uh, since Ambon's already conquered, they're headed to Kendari. Uh, the heavy covering force that's been protecting Ambon is going to uh, link up with them and follow them around for a bit. Also, 21st Air Flotilla, maybe two, two days to arrive at Ambon, looks like. Uh, yeah, they need seven spaces. They're going to move six. Yeah, 
As for Carrier Division 2, um, this task force that's shadowing them, and this, um, this is the hex that the airstrike took place in, so this is probably the, the task force that they bombed. Um, I think this reported composition is highly unlikely. Um, if there were three heavy cruisers in this task force, my planes would not have been bombing AKLs. Uh, so this looks nasty, um, but I don't think it really is. Um, that said, there's still going to be quite a few ships in the task force. Uh, so instead of trying to get a strike on Surabaya again, I'm going to have the carrier pull, off, pull back a little bit. And doing this will allow us to pick off any stragglers that are still here. Um, but I think it's likely these guys are going to try to leave the area. Um, so if they try to leave towards the open ocean, um, we might get them. If they try to leave towards the Timor Sea, um, well, I mean, then they're kind of blocked in. Um, I mean, if they want to try to escape to the side of Australia, that area is becoming more dangerous, too. So uh, I, I, th I think a southwesterly escape is what makes the most sense for them, so that's what I'm going to cut off. Kuching is at 99%, uh, so it's going to hit air capacity 4, which means there will be no excuse for the Bettys here not to be... I keep saying Bettys. I think they're Nels. They are Nels. Uh, no excuse for the Nels here not to carry torpedoes. So, if getting my carriers this close to Surabaya has spooked them, and they put to sea, they are in range. Well, they will be in range if they go more than two hexes, because for the moment, ooh, good thing I checked. Um, I want to restrict them to 14, because it's almost certain uh, that Surabaya itself and probably Batavia will have fighter coverage, so we do not want unescorted Bettys flying down here. I've started loading up an amphibious task force for Port Moresby. I don't quite have all the ships I need f to carry that many troops, but I think tomorrow I probably will, and it's going to take more than a day to load them all up, so I might as well get a head start. Uh, I've also reconstituted the Kido Butai with three out of the four available carriers. I'm leaving Kaga behind because she's got a little bit more maintenance requirements than everyone else right now, and I'd rather get that addressed. Uh, Tayo is passing by truck. Uh, we're actually going to have it arrive in truck and unload the zeros that aren't quite airworthy yet, and then truck will get those airworthy and fly them down to Rabal. Uh, so at Rabal, we currently have 13 zeros along with the Betty squadron. Uh, for now, the Bettys are assigned to bomb Port Moresby since they've got a dozen bombers there. One last thing to take note of before I close this out is that my um, training is starting to reach a point where I can probably start extracting pilots and start putting them to good use. Um, I can find like some squadrons that are doing like ASW training. Like, uh, so this is pretty typical of an ASW training squadron for now where we've got a whole bunch of units that are working their way into the 50s. Um, I'd ideally like to get them up to 70. Um, I'm going to settle for 60 over the short term. Um, so really, like probably within another week, um, I'm going to start transitioning air, air pilots out and um, start equipping frontline squadrons that are in need of ASW trained pilots, like especially around uh, uh, the Indochina coast. Um, Dutch East Indies is going to have a lot of need for them, that sort of thing. And I think the light bomber squadrons of the 5th Air Division in particular are going to be getting a lot of ASW work as the 5th Division starts. Um, relocating from the Philippines down into the Dutch East Indies.
I am getting the air divisions correct, right? Yes, the fifth division. Uh, third division is going to be primarily responsible for the Burma Theater after they finish up in Malaya. All right, so that'll do it. See you for the combat replay. We're back. Combat replay for Christmas Eve 1941 in progress. Row 62 just hit a mine at Port Moresby. That actually sounded to me like there might have been multiple mine impacts. Just because of the delay between the sound effect and when the message that the RO60 hit something. So I'm going to have to check the combat reports to see if there's any additional mine impacts. Yeah, I don't even think the sound that played was the sound effect for a sub hitting a mine. Ah. The Helena again. Interesting. Didn't expect to see her east of Pearl Harbor twice. Well, that's it for the row sixty. didn't go after the cargo ships after he took care of the escort? That's a shame. Yeah, I don't think subs ever attack multiple targets, though. Here we go. Been tracking the sub for a few turns, so hopefully that detection level will give us a bit of an advantage in this combat. Nothing. Can't seem to get any luck. for it. Uh, this is a support attack. Doesn't look like we hit anything. At least one Catalina blown up. Basically hit nothing again.
guys. They're already starting to smoke over here. Uh, we didn't do that much damage. Uh, let's see if we can get an idea for who's down here. Uh, so one unit is a base force. 109th, second base. So I think there were three units reported. So two out of the three units are base forces. So looks like this is actually going to be a pretty weak group of enemy units. Well, believe it or not, I'm happy with just getting one, just because mates really aren't that great. So, mixed it up a little bit, assigned some zeros to uh, strafing duty, and you can see we got a little bit of damage on this enemy minesweeper, and who knows, maybe that'll be substantial damage since we started a fire. Too late for you, Kandari. There we go. Heavy fires, heavy damage. That's a kill. to attack the cargo ships. It's kind of a shame the players don't have control over that. So, Guam invasion's finally happening. Failed to break through this roadblock here. 
Although we did not take any casualties, and the defenders got a supply shortage. So, kind of know which direction that's going. Kagan, I expect, is going to hold. Oh, it looks like they've been reinforced, too. Oh, wow. Oh, did not see that coming. Okay, so what happened here? Uh, we have less starting AV than they did. Uh, but we had 2 to 1 odds after adjustments. Uh, so the enemy has negative disruption, negative prep, and fatigue. Um, the disruption's probably because of the battleship bombardments, even though that was a turn ago. Uh, we took substantial casualties, but I guess it's not surprising considering how much the enemy had there. Yeah, so that could have gone really badly for us, but it worked out. We got at least two B-17s destroyed. That should be a little slaughter. Hopefully we'll finally get these guys to surrender. Nope. Three to one odds, and they are holding on. Alright, Lucina is ours. Going over the results of the turn, uh, first thing I want to mention is I ch did check the combat reports really quick, and the only uh, ship to hit a mine this turn was our uh, row class sub at Port Moresby. Uh, so I did not interpret that feedback correctly during the replay. Um, but anyways, uh, moderate gain for the turn. Um, didn't have too much fireworks going on. Um, air losses were pretty mild. Uh, we lost two Bettys and a zero. Um, didn't take out too much of them, really. The, it's the three B-17s uh, that we got on the ground at Kigan were probably the most important results as far as uh, air losses for us. It was just one-offs for other random planes besides that. Um, Ship sunk. Uh, the Boise came off the kill list for today. Um, that is pretty surprising considering how hard that ship was hit. Um, I'm not sure why it came off the list, um, but for whatever reason, Intel says uh, that the Boise did not sink. Uh, so just worth mentioning that. Um, Intel also believes that the uh, Mauritius sunk. Um, and then, of course, we got a destroyer over at Pearl Harbor today. Looking at the individual theaters, uh, it's over in China, we got one shoot down of a bomber over Wu Chang, a Hudson bomber. Uh, the um, enemy land units at Taiyuan held out, uh, but they're taking combat squads being disabled that we're not, so that's turning out to benefit us. And then at Huainan, we routed an enemy uh, core, uh, so they took a ton of casualties and we didn't take any of our own. Uh, at the Philippines, our air campaign isn't being very successful at the moment. Uh, we shot down a P-35, but ended up losing a Betty and a Zero. Um, we're not doing a whole lot of damage on the ground with our bombing raids, so these sorties are accomplishing very little. Um, one thing we did accomplish was crippling and quite possibly sinking a minesweeper. That was done with 
zeros given strafing orders. Um, on the ground, the war is going pretty well for the moment. Uh, Kagan was captured. That was a bit of a surprise, and it looks like uh, what got us over the top was the battleship bombardment on yesterday's turn. Um, on Luzon, Bayombang held again. Um, you know, those those guys are basically fighting to the death, so they're fighting very well. Um, and then south of Manila, we captured Lucina, um, causing quite a few casualties there and taking very little of ourselves. Um, at Port Moresby, we lost the submarine RO-60 to a mine. Uh, we had a Betty raid on the airbase at Port Moresby that damaged and disabled several aircraft, including destroying a Catalina for sure. Um, and then up on the uh, northern Papua New Guinea coast, we captured Madang. At Hawaii, our submarines sank one of the destroyers trying to kill them, and we've begun our invasion of Guam. So that's going to do it for this turn. Well, go ahead and get started on the setup for Christmas Day. So we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.